Hey, this is Mark Silver. Let's take our data that I collected in the field the other day and make the simplest of Opus Projects projects. Now, to get started, I need to make a new project. So I'm going to browse to the NGS NOAA.gov website and click on Opus, just like I normally would. And then I'm going to click on this beta link on the left that's labeled Projects. And then I'm going to cl click on Create to make a new project. So I'll enter an email address. This email address has to be approved. And we'll give it a title. Um, we'll give it an approximate location. Close enough. Our anticipated start day is today. We're going to have four stations and it's going to last five hours, hopefully. So um, I'm ready to go. I'll click on Create and immediately I'll get a notification online that I've uh, created a new project. Now I'm going to save that information in Notepad and uh, we'll get started again in just a second. Okay, I've collected my field data and I've got a new Opus Projects project defined. I'm ready to download my data from the GPS receivers and upload it to Opus. So to do that I'm going to pick the tool. All three of the occupations were done with X90 Opus GPS receivers. I'm going to mount the first GPS receiver, so I'm just plugging the GPS receiver into the USB port on my computer, and I'll click Download from X90. And the tool will automatically download the occupation and put it up here. The point ID for this first file, see it starts at 1056 and goes to 541. So the PID on this one is Q175. And uh, I'll make the description the same. And now I'm ready for the second receiver. I'll plug it in and click on download. Again, the tool automatically downloads all of the new occupations that are on this GPS receiver and adds them into my list of occupations. Let's see, this one that begins at 2 p.m. is V. 175 and this next one is Ajax great so I'll unplug the second receiver and I'll plug in the cable to the third receiver and we'll download that receivers occupation And uh, that's this one here. Start at 11.57. That one is N62. Open an underscore so that it's four characters. And the height on this one was 1.5 meters, so I'll have to change the default there. Now I want to sub submit all four of these occupations as an Opus project. And to do that, I can make a new project with the project identifier that I have for my new job. I'm going to clip it out of Notepad here, type it into project name, and I'm going to move each of these four occupations into that project. And I'll click this checkbox here signifying that it is an Opus project. Now all I need to do is click on the Submit to Opus button, which will automatically take that occupation, decimate it to 15 seconds, and then make a zip file with just the occupation in it. And uh, the neat thing about this is the tool will automatically fill in all of the blanks on the uh, submission form. Control-V, Open and uh, you'll see down here it actually fills in my project identifier for me so all that's left for me to do is click on upload to static great um, now at this point I could enter the description information for this and uh, if I had the PID for the mark um, I do I can click on this and I can enter the PID for the first mark, which was Q175, and the PID is LP0263, and 
um, I can also enter a photo for this mark so I can browse to the location where I have my field work this is Q175 and I can pick a close-up picture of the mark that's the better of them and I can pick a horizon picture that one there is probably pretty decent and if I wanted to uh, pen to the description I could put it in here I'll click on Upload Description, and then this will transfer the two pictures that I've chosen up into my project with um, any description information that I might have added. So this is an optional step. You don't have to do it. Um, I think that having your field crews, especially if your field crews are different than the project manager, makes sense to have them enter some description information any problems that they encountered, and uh, put a couple pictures here so that everybody can remember what they've done. The first occupation has been submitted to Opus, and Opus is processing it right now. Let's submit the second one at this point. So uh, I'll select the second one, click on Submit to Opus. It'll automatically decimate it, zip it, and uh, Control-V enters the project file here and then I can zoom down and click on upload to static and uh, I'm going to leave this mark undescribed and then we'll get the third submit to opus submit to opus control V open roll down upload to static skip the description on this one and we'll pick the fourth observation and submit it to Opus. So upload to static. Now all four of my observations have been uploaded to the project. Um, you can see the project IDs written down. Now I need to wait until all four of these occupations have been processed in Opus and we have an initial uh, solution for them. And we've got four Opus solutions for our four observations. The first one on the north end, um, it looks pretty good. This um, site has a problem. There's a telephone pole one foot to the north of the mark. And so there's some wires overhead. It's uh, one of those poles that you see along a railroad track. Um, but still, we got 96% observation used and 90% fixed ambiguities. Our overall RMS is uh, 2 centimeters. That's not bad. Um, the next two points, uh, wide open. So here is um, V175, 96, 100, and our overall RMS is 1.2 centimeters. This looks great. Um, this is uh, Ajax, I think. Yep, Ajax, uh, 13 millimeters, looks great, uh, 98 and 100% used, hard to beat that. Uh, this site, uh, which is N62, has a series of large trees just to the south of it, so it has probably a 35 degree obstruction. And you can see that the number of observations that's used is the lowest of this group, and uh, that's reflected in the latitude in this case. Um, but all in all, not bad Opus solutions, Opus static solutions for relatively short occupations. Well, let's look at our Opus project now. I'm going to go to Opus, and then I'm going to click on Projects, and I'm going to uh, manage the project. So I'm going to get the project ID. Put that in here. And get my manager keyword which is like the password paste that in and click on manage so all of this processing is occurring up in the cloud at this point so um, this is just limited by the uh, speed of my internet connection you can see that Opus Projects has done something rather brilliant it's taken my first occupation or my first session and automatically sessioned out the files and in a second, you'll see why this is pretty cool. And then here's my second um, 
observation set here. So the sessioning has been done automatically. Now Q175 and N62, those files extend into both the morning and the afternoon sessions. But um, I didn't have to do anything to, the, to make that happen. Now before we start, we can set some preferences for our job. Uh, you can see all of the, the keywords here. You can add extra people to the list. So every time I submit an Opus solution that has this project ID, I can have additional email go out to additional people. I can set the, uh, let's call it blunder detection. So if I have an observation that's less than 80%, it's going to get flagged. Or if I have an uh, uncertainty that's uh, larger than two and a half centimeters, that's also going to get flagged. That nif nifty session determination stuff happens right down here in this corner. And then um, the tool will automatically co-locate or merge points if they're closer than one meter in this point. Um, so that's pretty cool. All this stuff looks great. I'm just going to accept the uh, defaults and we'll come back here. And we need to set up these sessions and process those. So I'm going to come down here and click. Um, well, first, before we do that, let's look at some of these um, of these uh, marks. We'll look at Q175. And if your field crew entered any information for these marks, it will show up here. Um, along with the um, a priori Opus solution. So this is our initial Opus solution. And you can see we only have one occupation to compare with down here. Uh, let's go back to the manager's page and then we'll set up a couple of sessions for the morning and the afternoon and get those processing. To do that I can just click here and like everything in computer land there's multiple ways to do everything. You'll see that N62 has been flagged here because the number of fixed observations didn't meet my uh, blender detection limits. You can also see that I've got two files that go morning and afternoon and then this B175 which is um, this middle mark right here actually I picked up that middle receiver and moved it down to the bottom um, this looks great I'm gonna click on marks and cores here and let's see what cores stations have automatically been selected well that looks pretty good so we've got um, PO86 I think that is and uh, 113 Salt Lake City, Utah, that's just LCU, the public utilities. Um, but we've got, that looks like pretty good cores coverage. I'm not going to mess with that. If I wanted to, I could click on Add Cores over here and do it from pick menus that are pretty slick. Um, this looks pretty good. Let's set up processing for this morning session. And uh, to be honest, not much of this makes any difference, but I am going to hold... Uh, I think I decided to hold uh, N62 as a hub. So I'll click on that. And these are live settings, so when you click and unclick on these, it changes the processing um, methodology here. When you take your Opus Projects course, they'll spend some time on that. I'm going to accept all of the defaults here. Um, user type, everything looks great. And this will be Adjustment A, and we'll get that one started. So that adjustment's going to hit uh, happen in the background. This is a report that tells me what's going to happen in that adjustment. Uh, we need to do the second uh, uh, session, and so I can do that by dropping this down and choosing B here, and this will load my uh, second session. And again, you'll see that it's properly broken the sessions up, which is pretty slick, and it's flagged N62 as having problems. So um, let's set up processing on this one. Again, we'll set N62 as a hub, and I'll click on Perform Processing. And we're good to go until these sessions process. Now what's going to happen is instead of processing these three observations as individual occupations uh, with baselines that go back to the core station, these three observations are going to get processed simultaneously against each other and against all of the cores. 
So uh, basically this N62 I'm hoping is going to get helped right here. It's going to get helped by evaluating the shorter baselines to these other two points. So I'll see you in a second when I get my session uh, finished. So I waited about five minutes and both of these sessions have been processed by the Opus Projects processor. When the email comes back you get a brief summary of the session and then this text file contains the results of that session processing. Now you'll notice that these error estimates here are about of an order of magnitude less than they were from a straight Opus solution. Um, there's a difference in the definition of these. An Opus solution is the actual peak-to-peak -peak measurements that are observed running back to the core site. These are mathematically derived and uh, we can probably talk about what those are when we have more time. So I've got my two sessions done here. Let's maximize this. What we want to do now is combine these two sessions into a network adjustment of the entire job. And I'm going to show you. Here's a session A, and you'll, you can see here that the RMS values for latitude and longitude are substantially smaller than they were for the Opus solutions. And um, this has been flagged. Uh, because the uh, number of uh, fixed observations is not above uh, 80%, but um, I think if we looked at that, we decided it would, might be okay. Let's go back to the manager's page now. Again, we're going to combine these two sessions, session A and session B, into an adjusted network result. So we're going to set that up. I'm going to combine both of these. Now for my first adjustment. I'm going to do a dash and we'll call it HORZ. Let's do a horizontal and for that let's hold all of the cores 3D and we'll allow all of our marks to be unrestrained. The great thing about Opus Projects is we can get that adjustment going in the queue in the background. It's going to happen out in the cloud someplace and let's set up a vertical adjustment We'll add both these occupations. And for this, I'm going to hold one of the cores horizontal. And I'm going to unconstrain the other core's sides. And then I'm going to take Q175, which is our top point and I'm going to constrain its elevation to the published value. So its published value is 824. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're taking the existing geoid for this area, we're pinning it at one point, this point right here, and we're going to calculate elevations for the rest of these points. Uh, again, the rest of the Preferences seem okay for this demo, so we'll click Perform Adjustment and get it running in the background. Now those adjustments happen fairly quickly. I'm going to guess that if I refresh right now, at least the horizontal adjustment will be done. And it is. So we can view that file by clicking on Show File. And then... You'll see that for each of the unconstrained marks, we get an error estimate and a horizontal position. So these four occupations that I made have been processed against five cores sites, and they've been internally processed against each other. So I would expect this to be a much better solution than we would get by just running Opus Static alone. Okay, my vertical adjustment just completed. I forgot to rename it dash vert, so it's called network final here. Let's um, show that adjustment. And you'll see all of our unconstrained marks are at the top. And then, in this case, all of the cores have been unconstrained. And the only thing that's been held are uh, PO86 and then Q175 for vertical. So if we were to look at some of, let's say, let's take uh, Ajax, let me get the top here. 
1543.761, and the published value for Ajax is 43.779, so centimeter there. Anyway, that's the whole Opus Project story, and um, I think it's a pretty slick system. The things I like about it the most are I'm not responsible for maintaining the software on my computer. Somebody else doesn't. I'm not responsible for updating uh, the core's coordinates. I don't have to bring those files in manually at the beginning of every processing sequence. They're in the cloud, and it's the same cloud that's evaluating my observation data. And the submittal is just as simple as doing an Opus solution. I get a lot more control over the results. And um, probably best of all is that it's free. Anyway, thank you very much for both watching this video and for reading my article in American Surveyor. Good day.